What's going on guys? Big VP back with another Game Case Arcades video. On this one today, we're looking at Shield B's 41 terabyte ultimate console. This is specked out. We got four Xbox controllers, we got two aim tracks, and we got a 10 inch in case active marquee going on. Damn, it's beautiful. <laughs> So I think the best way to do this is let's start with the basics. Let's go over the PC specs alone. Let's talk about the add-ons. Let's talk about what's going on as far as the PC side of it. Then we'll go into the game side of it. Then we'll go into like the monitor. It, it might be a little sporadic, but let's start with the main thing, which is the actual PC specs on this. Now I did a video part one of Shield B's PC. Basically I was live streaming and uh, I was just talking to the camera. Kind of going over a couple of things, so you might hear some repetitive stuff. Not too bad though, this is the official kind of video going out for Shield B. So we are looking at an i5 overclocked running 32 gigs of RAM with a 3070 Ti in it. One terabyte M.2 SSD along with four 12 terabyte hard disk drives, Seagates, Exos, and all that. That's spec wise on that. So again, an i5, you got a 3070 Ti, 32 gigs of RAM. Man, and all the hard drives is in that case. I didn't say it clearly in the first video, this does have one terabyte M.2 SSD. I did say SSD in the other video. It's very important to note it is an M.2 SSD as they are much faster than regular SSDs. And But then again, SSDs are faster than regular hard drives. So, just keep that in mind, yes, this is running an M.2 SSD. I got a bunch of people like, you didn't do M.2? Like, yes, there is a one that, an M.2 in this. It's an actual Samsung. I always use Samsung for the boots. So you do have your Samsung one terabyte M.2 SSD. <laughs> so as far as the extra add-ons going on on this, obviously you have your four Xbox One controllers. I don't do Xbox 360, Xbox One controllers with the USB dongle. He's got two aim tracks and his special request he wanted an rgb decked out pc case along with a monitor inside the case i'm gonna go in depth with the monitor and all that but there's a lot of add-ons going on normally my pc cases do have the six rgb fans as you see here but he wanted more rgb so i do have the power kind of coil wire rgb and i do have a rgb strip right behind the glass here and again, obviously you have your 10.1 screen in case. What he's gonna use it for, I don't know, but right now I do have it set to the actual active marquee with hyperspin. So right now I'm inside the PC games wheel and uh, whatever the logo, or I should say the wheel image is, it shows up on the screen. All right guys, so this is running my standard 40 terabyte, no BS, no filler, ultimate console hyperspin setup but as per the customer's request he did want a couple of extra systems along with hacked roms and his big thing was open board this guy was big on open board so with that in mind there's a lot of games to it originally my files were 36,000 games a little bit over 36,000 let me tell you what systems i added and then i'll tell you the official game count on it open board alone he actually emailed me a list of games that he wanted. That's awesome, I appreciate it, I love it. I downloaded all those games. I went from 100 open board games to 400 open board games. I also added for him the Panasonic 3DO. I did the Sega Saturn, Sega Saturn Japan, and for kicks I did add the original Microsoft Xbox, the original Xbox. I've had those ROMs in the past, basically doing some research and basically had to update the emulator. Out of like the handful of games I tested with Xbox, it worked and I added it. Why not? He has the open space for it. I added it. So alongside the systems, there was also two wheels I added, which are the hacked ROMs. There was a handful of like Sega Genesis, you're looking at like five hack games, but two systems, the Super Nintendo and the NES, I had to put on its own wheel. Those clocked in alone, those two systems, you were looking at an additional 2,500 games, hacked games. So. I don't want to make the official number including those hacks 
because there was like 50 different versions of like Mario Kart, for example. So I'm not gonna include the hacked ROMs in my official number, but this right now clocked in at 41 terabytes, originally 36,000 games. This clocked in at a little bit over 39,000 games. Not including the hacked ROMs. That's how much it added. That was, that was awesome. The big thing I did also when it came to the Xbox, I made sure not to include duplicates. I did not have any duplicates from the PS2 era. So Xbox is basically strictly just Xbox games. So that was a big deal. So yes, you are looking at Shield B's 41 terabyte ultimate console. Keep in mind though, when I do say these numbers 41, that's the amount of game data. That's also not including like the other like Epic Games stuff and like uh, Battle.net and Call of Duty stuff. Those I don't really count inside of the actual game data. That's just hyperspin data alone. Remember though, this computer actually has 49 terabytes. One terabyte M.2 SSD and four 12 terabyte hard disk drive. So there is 49 total terabytes. But again, like I said in my past videos, such as the 12 terabyte hard drives, you don't really get 12 terabytes, they came down to 10.9 final. So just keep that in mind. He basically, what I'm trying to get is that he technically has more data. There is open space in all the drives. So if you ever wanted to add more PC games, if you ever wanted to play maybe more Epic game stuff, or he wanted to you know, buy Steam games, he does have the space for it in this build. So again, I've done so many ultimate consoles. It's just this right here, just this action right here alone that's going on, especially with the monitor. It's it's pretty cool stuff. I don't know what his intent is with the monitor. I don't even know how he's gonna have this set up, but me personally, if I was getting this PC, I would imagine the setup kind of like this on the table, this way you could use the monitor. And right now I do have it set to active marquee in hyperspin. So whatever the real image is, it does show it on the screen as you can see. Pretty cool, pretty nice stuff. I do have the keyboard. Uh, I was using the Xbox controller. I was talking and uh, basically after five minutes of no use, the Xbox controller goes out. But as you can see, we're good. Able to go in and out. It's awesome stuff. Like I said, I did add the Microsoft Xbox wheel, the Panasonic 3DO. A lot of stuff got added. I did mention it in the first video why I added the 3DO and the Sega Saturn. You'll go back to that video, but again, I just want to focus kind of an overall, over, overall kind of thing going on here. All in all, amazing stuff. He was big on RGB. So the cases that I always get always have six RGB fans on them and they do have the remote. So it's pretty cool. You could change the colors to it. You could do the mode and there's actually an LED button on the actual PC case. So it's just once you go into an actual game, it'll show you the logo. It's very very cool stuff all right so let's talk about shield b himself shield b sent me an email he actually sent me a request form online basically going over basics hey vic i want an ultimate console got to talking basic stuff he goes vic i want an ultimate console but i do want an rgb decked out case so going back and forth i got the deposit and i got to work ordered all the parts the pc side alone i mean the hardware alone in this you could just figure out the dollar amount on just the PC side So again, I do have an option on you sending me your computer or if you give me the reins if you give me the control I will get you a very well specced out PC for what I charge. I don't go cheap I'm not using a Dell Optiplex. This doesn't have a 10 uh, a 1650 in it. No, this is the best I could get this is to me amazing this it's just insane um i really i really am amazed with it uh the graphics card the 3070 ti in it you could just see the size of it it's it's massive it's it's <laughs> it's awesome so as i was talking to shield b you know he did mention hey vic i want a, a lot of rgb i do want this kind of screen so i said my main focus was to make sure that the actual ultimate console works my main thing was hey let me make sure that this all worked this was last like I was like, this is the last thing on my mind because if something doesn't work out, that's fine. I could always return it and all that, but this was the main focus. So I gave him a date range and honestly I felt, what's the word I wanna use? I gave him 30 to 60 days and I got this done in 30 days. So 
Again, it is an ultimate console. I do test heavily, like heavy testing on all the emulators and stuff. That's why it doesn't take a day for this. It does take time. And I'm just happy to know that it works. I just downloaded for him this new, and I did it in the, in the, in the promo, the Stray game. Uh, I even made a video for him on how he could download new PC games if he wanted. There's a lot going on on this build. So shout out again to Shield B for giving me the opportunity. Awesome stuff. So he could run this with Hyperspin or he could run it as a streaming recording kind of setup. You can even put OBS Studios over there if you want. Again, you could do your basic stuff. As you can see, like I could put YouTube on it. There's a lot going on. Basically, I exited Hyperspin if he's looking to, let's say, play epic games such as Fall Guys or uh, uh, Fortnite, those are not in Hyperspin because they do need the launcher to work. Once you get these launchers involved with Hyperspin, it's a huge headache, you don't wanna deal with it. You do wanna play these outside of Hyperspin. But uh, that's honestly the basics of it. It's it's a beautiful machine. It's, uh, it's definitely one for the books. <laughs> All right, with that in mind, let's take this PC down. Let's connect the aim tracks to it. Let me talk about the light gun stuff. And then I'm gonna go over more of this monitor. All right guys, I figured I'd take this quick time to show off the gun game. Just like what I did with Lewis's build, this is awesome. Basically, she'll be so the same exact thing. Said, hey Vic, I want the same thing. So we do have dual aim tracks, two aim tracks, and I do have the LED sensor bar above the TV slash monitor. Uh, it has to be for aim tracks. It has to be on the top of the TV. It can't be on the bottom, the side. It has to be on top. If you are running gun for IR, you will get four actual LEDs for each side of the screen. What's really cool, especially with gun for IR and for the aim tracks, you could use the USB that's on the TV to power it. It's just basically giving power to the LEDs. That's all it is. It does give you like aim track and Ray does do give you like a long USB that you could plug it into your PC but it's not really needed. You could do any TV nowadays, it does have a USB port, you just pop it in and it's good to go. Again, it's basically there to power the LEDs. Uh, so again, I do have my Xbox controller. Anytime in the videos that you see me go up and down, it's not a spaz, it's just me going up and down. It's kind of a habit I have, but it's also to show you the responsiveness of the system. I'll long press on this. Uh, I was running Terminator on the promo and I'll put it. As you can see, the active marquee is pretty cool. It does go along with it. Another great feature by Shield B. I never did uh, Terminator, so long press that, it'll activate. Now this is a main arcade game. I believe I have, I don't know the exact number, but I think it's like 90 to 95 main arcade games. Originally my shotgun gun game wheel was only MAME and then I put all the gun games on it because honestly people don't really know the difference between MAME, Model 2, Model 3. So for example, if I left the shotgun games as like MAME, somebody would be like, hey Vic, where's the House of the Dead? That's under Model 2. It, I basically saved your headache. So the shotgun games does have MAME, all Tato, Techno Parrot. It's got all the gun games in one. MAME Arcade is actually very simple. You don't need an actual controller. The coin and the star is actually mapped onto the actual gun itself. So I usually have the right as the coin and then firing at the screen is your star. If you're not at the screen and you try to pull the trigger, it won't work. I'm right now holding player two in my hand. And as you can see, again, I do have the volume low. I like to keep it low so you can hear me talk. And player two, awesome. Player one, you can see the crosshair on the screen, but it says press start. Again, I have to point at the screen and pull the trigger. If I'm not pointing at the screen, you can see there it says to start. Unless I point at the trigger, boom, now you're in it. So basically again, for me, Arcade, it's recognizing it as a uh, trigger, like a fire, like a shot. And again, aim tracks and gun for IR. If you're off the screen, it's registered as a right click. I have start button registered as the left click, which is the shoot the trigger. Awesome. Once you're done playing, you grab again your Xbox controller, long press on the X, and you're back. Cool, right? Not too bad. I always like Time Crisis. I'm a big Time Crisis fan. This is another example of a MAME arcade game. So again, long press on A. You might get a couple of like warnings, like this says graphic warning. I know for a fact like Time Crisis 1, the volume on it is low. You just have to bump up the volume on your TV. But basically, again, right button is to add coins and 
start. So there's really no start button on this specific game. It's just, hey, registering coins and all that. Time crisis is amazing with the foot pedal. You do have the left button mapped out to the foot. So again, left button, foot. Choo, choo, choo. Pew, pew, pew. Pew, pew, pew. Cool, and as you can see right now, I am running aim tracks. This right now is a 43 or a 49 inch screen. I'm drawing, drawing a blank. Uh, I believe they're 43, I should actually measure that. <laughs> but uh, 43 inch screen, let's say. And again, I am right now, I'm pretty close and I'm getting good response. So awesome, awesome stuff. Again, you could use the keyboard also if Shield B doesn't have it. You do have your Xbox controller, long press the X and you're back. All right, so now I wanna go over basically uh, a big deal, which is Time Crisis Raising Storm. This is the RP, RCPS3. This is a PlayStation 3 game. Uh, first time ever really put on an ultimate console. Uh, I just wanna do this live and explain what's happening and the process to get this to work. Uh, basically, as you can see, RCPS3 is launching. It does launch Minimize. There's a program running in the background called Borderless Gaming that is gonna enlarge it. Uh, I did explain it like in Josh's video uh, and watching Josh's video I have to kind of wait for this to go black for you to see the actual mouse. Uh, basically once this program activates even if I set PS3 to full screen uh, this issue still happens and it's actually worse if I don't use the borderless gaming app. Uh, again if you are launching regular PS3 it's fine. It's just this right here for the like on stuff it's a little bit of a headache. Not a headache but not a bad way. So right now I don't know if you see that, but the mouse right now is stuck in the middle. I can't move. Um, so basically what we have to do is that we have to just take the Xbox logo, the Xbox controller, I should say, and press the select key. Once you press the select key, you do have free range of the mouse. Uh, I do have basically enter as start and X as the A button, and I can use my analogs. We're gonna launch Raising Storm. So as you can see, like I said, once this borderless gaming activates, you don't really get control of the mouse until you press the select key. The select key is actually set to shift escape. Uh, and also the emulator is set to escape to exit. So it's a little bit of a thing. It's not too confusing, but so far I tested it and it does work. As you can see, basically there was caching that happened, the screen loaded, minimized, and now poof, it's big. But again, I'm stuck. My mouse is stuck right now. So again, if I take my Xbox controller and I tap it, literally tap it, I now have free range. You can now see my mouse here. I can now use the gun to calibrate. Again, Ray has like a no calibration needed, but this is what it is for me. So right now I'm gonna use my light gun. Awesome, awesome, and awesome. So as you can see, I'm calibrated. The only now little headache now is hold, to get out of this like calibration screen, there's no like triangle button that works. You have to hold the left button and hit the right. Keeping the left button pressed, now pull the trigger. And now you're basically able to free roam it and such. So again, I'm gonna grab my Xbox controller, almost like a regular PlayStation controller. I can go up and down. We're gonna go into arcade mode. And I'm gonna go into free play, one player. Only one player works. You can't do multiplayer on this. Only one player works. And cool, the cutscene is kind of long. It's fairly long on this. Uh, I'm not able to skip it, but I'll come back and I'm going to bump up the volume and we're going to hear that this system right here plays this game awesome. No sound stutter at all, no sound issues at all. Uh, it's pretty cool. Awesome stuff. All right, and here we go. So again, using the left trigger as my shield. So reloading and you're going to bring up the shield. Yeah. That right there is your 3070 Ti, 32 gigs of RAM doing work. Beautiful stuff. Awesome. Again, that's the only light minor thing is the whole thing with this calibration and the full screen thing. I mean, again, it works. As you can see, it does work. Does it work flawlessly? Honestly, once you get like the hang of it, it's good to go. Like me now, I know like how to get to it, but then again, I do so many builds, I know how to make it run, so. I'm basically holding down the trigger. You could single tap, 
but you could hold down the trigger. And now when you are done playing, you're gonna hold down the Xbox logo. And there you go, you're out. Awesome, 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 awesome stuff. All right, okay guys, so I got the PC up on my battle station. I basically filmed this as I go. I shoot the promo video first and then uh, basically like I had it on my desk here and then I started talking and then I put it on the floor and I did the aim track stuff and I started talking. So that's just kind of like my workflow on it. But I got the computer right now up here. So in the part of the promo video, I basically was showing off like Stray, this new PC game, basically just me gaming and the PC to my right. Um, again. Uh, kind of sporadic, but let's first start off with the actual boot. Let's see how long this thing takes to boot. So three, two, one. And while it boots, I'll be talking a lot. So again, Shield B was very big on the PC case must have RGB. That was a huge deal. And as we went along, he did want this kind of 10.1, or I should say he just wanted a monitor in the actual case. He was looking at like some like Leon, L-I-O-N, L-C-D. Um, they were kind of expensive, not to mention they were small, like seven inch or six inch. This right now is running a 10 inch and we're booted. This right now is running a 10 inch Raspberry Pi touch screen actually. Uh, before like I was able to actually touch, you can actually see it there. I have to really forcefully do it, but it's not really used for touch screen. But essentially, yes, that is a Raspberry Pi touch screen. Uh, I'm gonna take you in closer on the actual case because I had, I had to do something to the actual glass. Um, I basically had to paint this area here so you could hide the HDMI cord. Again, it was so much stuff. So again, Shilby was like, Vic, I want this console, but I also want RGB. I want it RGB'd out and I want the LCD. So I said, Shield, bro, let me focus. Main thing is to get the ultimate console up and running. Once I have this all set, I'll go into the details on the case and such. So now I don't know how Show B's kind of setup is gonna be. This is what I would imagine it would be, just like how these streamers are, really to utilize this screen. Um, you know, me personally right now, if I'm gaming, uh, again, I don't know what he wants to put on this screen. Me personally, uh, the way like my personal setup is, like I can't use a screen. I could use these two big screens I have here, which is the intent. Like if I wanna put Discord chat or something like that, but uh, I don't know what his plan is. Right now though, I just kind of want to go as, you know, I want to give you like the flow of it. So PC's booted, right? Again, like I said in my past videos, I personally, I'm going to tell this shield too. Um, I personally am not a fan of any artwork on the desktop. Uh, I did work on other people's, like I've team viewed in on other people's setups and they do download these animated motion backgrounds. I'm going to be brutally honest, that eats up so much like CPU and so much RAM. He could do that for this. I mean, he is running 32 gigs of RAM. I'm pretty sure it's not gonna be, you know, an issue. But I remember Shield B was like, dude, if this screen is gonna give you an issue and it's gonna slow down performance, I don't want it. And basically what I'm trying to get at is if you do do these like animated desktop background wallpapers, you're gonna get, it's gonna eat up CPU. What do I suggest in its place? Honestly, Maybe load up like a YouTube video in the background. Or again, it, the way streamers do it, they might have this as like a Discord chat. So they could game on this and then load up a Discord chat. Um, I was just right now, I mean, it's pretty cool. See, like I technically have two screens. Uh, big thing though, yes, keep in mind, um, you know, if you are running YouTube, you don't really want to put the volume on. Like you want to leave it muted or else you're gonna hear the game volume and this. Again, I don't know what his plan is exactly, but as you can see, I, I just loaded up myself. I loaded up the Time Crisis dedicated shooter and I'm able to game. So that's what's pretty cool too. Like I right now could load up Epic Games, I could load up Fall Guys and game and it's not, it's not messing with this at all. That's where like I personally would probably suggest like, you know, maybe doing a Discord chat if he's gonna be into streaming. Maybe could use that as a chat or just kind of a background thing. I don't know. Again, it all depends on what it is. But right now, I'm going to launch a game. I still have YouTube launched. It's very cool. It's very unique. I mean, I've never done an ultimate console like this. Again, he also was big on RGB. He's like, Vic, I need my RGB, dude. And basically, there's six 
fans in this case. So again, going back now in the case and the PC, I did get this from Micro Center. It did come with like a Leon Lee case. I got it and I replaced it. That's just how I always do it. I never really use the stock cases and such. But again, it's just awesome looking. As far as like the add-ons, I mean, again, the RGB fans were always there. This power thing here with the RGB, it's cool. It's more for visual purposes. That's just what he wanted and awesome stuff. It's great. I have the Xbox controller linked. I got the Xbox One dongle up top. Awesome. I also do like where you are, you don't see it, but there is a strip of RGB right here. It was about 15 inches long. There is an RGB strip pointing that way. It was, you know, it's not needed, but he wanted it. So again, just to kind of go through it, I am playing uh, uh, Fall Guys. Big thing with Fall Guys right now is that I can't go to the second screen unless I hit the Windows key. Now I'm able to do it. So basically in game, depending on the game, I'm locked in on this one screen. But now that I'm here, I could take this and I honestly was running, it was actually kind of funny. I was actually just, I just was playing um, a fish tank in the background. Uh, I thought that was kind of cool. Uh, me as like a previous reefer, I used to enjoy my, my fish tanks. I basically had this, it's kind of dumb because it has like wording on it, but I got a fish tank now <laughs> inside the PC case and I'm playing Fall Guys. Again, it, it's a second monitor. It's really whatever you want to do, whatever you wanna, you know, whatever you want out of it. It's pretty cool. Uh, and Fall Guys, I mean, this is a free game. Epic Games, like I said, if you don't have Epic Games, you should make an account. I created an account for Shield B. I am using his account right now. And uh, let's try to get this W on Fall Guys. Again, this right now was a, originally was a paid game, but uh, Epic Games has it for free. And you might as well jump on it. And uh, I don't want to embarrass myself, but uh, awesome. It's cool. I could exit out again using right now the Xbox controller. I could also utilize the keyboard and the mouse. I always give this wireless keyboard a mouse. If he wanted like a pro keyboard or a pro mouse, he'll just get that on his own. But uh, either way, it works. It's awesome. All right, so real quick, I'm gonna show off this kind of cool feature that I did with Hyperspin. Uh, I'm on my desktop, I have YouTube still open, so I could, and I would I would close that if I'm gonna launch Hyperspin because of this kind of feature. Just keep in mind though, that is Firefox. So right now, if I reopen Firefox, it's gonna open up to this screen here. Unless I drag it here, if I exit it here, it's gonna then pop up on this screen. So Firefox is like, hey, wherever it was last, that's where it'll be. So just keep that in mind again, I don't know where he's gonna be putting this. But we're gonna exit Firefox, and I'm gonna launch Hyperspin to show off Active Marquee. Basically now this screen is gonna show the wheel image on Hyperspin. Again, this is considered an Active Marquee. So if you had an actual arcade cabinet, you know, you have your arcade cabinet and then you have the marquee, people put screens on it and basically it shows you the current game that you're playing. Right now, as you can see, it's basically taking the image, the wheel image is there. That's how I have this set. You could do other artwork and all that, but it gets very complex. I just kept it simple. It's whatever that real image is. Now, keep in mind though, this is running 720p, 1280 by 720p. So you could see like the outline. There you go, you can see it on this. You could see the outline, so it didn't fill the screen totally, but it is what it is. Um, and it's pretty cool. So like, for example, if I do like Super Nintendo, it's gonna show the game. And you could see like I have the transitions on, so you've got a swipe, you got like the ripple effect, you might get the fade effect, the drop effect. It's pretty cool. So again, I don't know what he's planning to do with this screen. I do have somebody that's interested in Active Marquee and I said, you know what? Let me test myself. Let's see if I can get it working and it works. It's pretty cool. I'll be brutally honest. There is a lot of like coding especially when it comes to like exiting and entering and when that stays on. So like I'm gonna launch right now Super Nintendo. You can see like it did an animation and it's still there, awesome. Basically if I exit and then I change a game, it's gonna move. So right now it's pretty cool, like this is awesome. He's gonna be playing, we're playing some Odd Real Monsters and I got the marquee next to me while I game. It's cool. I do know for a fact though that some of the PC games 
it's not going to be flawless like this. Only because of like some PC games and shotgun games, it runs like AHK. So if you look carefully at the promo video, I mean, I didn't see it, but you might, you might see me start a game and then you might see the actual marquee disappear. That's because the AHK file, there's like five other programs running and Hyperspin is just confused on, hey, did it exit, did it enter? It's mumbo jumbo stuff. But you're talking like 5% out of 100% of the system, it'll happen like that. But right now I'm playing some Super Nintendo with my Xbox controller. I got this console on hooked up to my battle station. Basically again, it's just HDMI and I could game. Again, if you had a TV, you have the volume on the TV. Awesome, long press the Xbox logo and I'm back. And as you can see, the active marquee works with it. It's, it's cool. It's like I said, I don't know if he's gonna like this feature, it's there. I'm gonna take the time now in this video to show you how to remove it. It's very simple. Cause again, I don't know what his plan is. He might wanna, you know, do like how I streamed where I'm playing my hyper spin, but then I have, you know, my chat open here. So again, it's a cool feature. It's a very simple on and off click to activate it and deactivate it. So let's go into now how to activate and deactivate this active marquee. So you exit out. Um, I'm not gonna make a shortcut on this cause I don't want him to go crazy. You're gonna go into your C drive, arcade, Hyperspin, and then in Hyperspin is a program called Hyper HQ. Hyper HQ. So you double click that, you're gonna let that load. All you simply gotta do is you go to tools, right on the front, so it's main settings, tools, LED blinky, disable. That's it. Exit out, if you relaunch Hyperspin, that is it. Your active marquee now is no longer there. Again, when Shobi gets it, he'll, I'm gonna have it on, I'll have it activated for him, but if he wants it, it's there. If not, it's a quick disable. All right, so I'm gonna put you like in an, a weird position just to kind of show off the actual case itself. So again, Shield B was big on like RGB. He's like, Vic, I need this to glow. I need the RGB out of it. So uh, basically again, the case came with the six LED RGB fans. I added this power cable, which he wanted. And then I really put you there to show you the LED strip that's going on right in the edge here. So it is illuminating the front glass. Um, honestly, the, the six RGB fans alone was more than enough. Um, adding this power one, it's pretty cool. Uh, you know, it's very, it's got a nice effect. And honestly, it didn't cost that much. It was like a $20 piece from Amazon. It was a pain in the ass to like wire. Um, but in all honesty, it's, it's very cool. So, uh, the case has a controller in it. I'm not using any of the motherboard to control the RGB. So the case actually has a button up top that you could actually change the LEDs or it comes with a remote. So if you wanted it to be red or green and you want to do like auto, you could go through all like the modes. It's pretty cool. And again, this kind of like power strip, you could see as like the adjustable LEDs go, it's very cool. Same thing along here with that strip here. Um, big thing though I want to talk about is the actual monitor. I know right now I'm gonna have to probably, I'm, I'm winging this right now. Again, I have you in a weird spot. I hope the monitor is there. But the big thing was this monitor. This is a 10 inch monitor. It is touchscreen. I originally was looking at a 15 inch. I said to Shield, I was like, dude, I think I could put a 15 inch in it. And honestly, good thing I didn't uh, because I didn't take into account the actual connections needed for this. Um, so again, this round I was running a 10 inch and I actually had a paint. I spray painted the glass because I did try to vinyl wrap it. It didn't work. I spray painted the glass here because right here is the HDMI and the USB power cable to this monitor. So what's pretty cool with this monitor is that it is powered via USB. Awesome stuff. I'll take you closer, I'll kind of B-roll the back so you can actually see the wiring. There is actually two wires coming from the inside of the case and then back into the case. Basically it goes into HDMI on one of the ports of the graphics card and on a USB, so it's kind of like a loop in. That has to say that because that's actually connected to the actual monitor itself. But again, the big deal was this, I had to hide this. I don't think I, I mean, I did it on my stories. I'll try to find if I have a before picture, but you could actually see the HDMI cable and that cable was like the head of it. It's actually kind of thick and then also the USB. So I had to figure out a way to hide it. 
I was originally gonna paint like a piece of paper, paint the, like not paint it, but print it black. I was like, you know what? I'm building arcade cabinets. I got the paint out. I just spray painted the actual glass black. And I think it came out great. Look at that. Look at that lining right there. It is awesome. I'll be brutally honest though, when it comes to the actual monitor, this glass is really holding it in place. Um, basically right here is kind of like a pocket or a metal housing that holds the hard drives and the power supply. So it's kind of like a metal casing. Basically the monitor is sandwiched between the glass and the metal casing. So right here about halfway and up, there's nothing behind this monitor supporting it. So if Shelby lays this down and takes off the glass, just keep in mind that the monitor might tilt down, not a big deal. But basically I had it where I, I put the glass down and then I would tilt this side up and with my finger I would align the, 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 the screen and then close the case with the four screws. And it's, it's in there, like it ain't going nowhere. <laughs> it's pretty cool. All right guys, well there you guys have it. Shield B's ultimate console. You got four Xbox One controllers, you got two aim tracks, you got a 10 inch active marquee. Man, that is ultimate. This is, this is probably the, the most insane build I've done when it comes to an ultimate console. Woo! She'll be bro, I really hope you enjoy your new computer, man. <laughs> that was insane, you're crazy. <laughs>